This video is about blower wheel cleaning as well as cleaning the housing and the motor. This is one of the single most overlooked things, especially in residential applications where you know there's many upsells that people try to do. But this is one that if you keep a blower wheel clean and remove it and clean it when it's necessary, when it starts to get dirty, you're going to both improve the longevity of the blower, the system's going to perform better in terms of capacity, and it's also going to give you better efficiency. So it's critical that you take a look for dirty blower wheels like the ones that you're seeing right here. When they look like this, it's definitely time to pull them and clean them. So we're going to go step by step through how to remove, clean, and reinstall a dirty blower wheel and housing. First things first, in this video, we're going to be showing it on an air handler. The same thing is true on a gas furnace, but the blower is just lower in the assembly. And sometimes there's a few more wires to remove and sometimes a control panel, but it's the same basic idea. You're going to remove the panels and first you're going to inspect the blower wheel. Now, obviously here we're showing it spinning. You want to have it completely off before you remove the panels. And when it looks like this, or it looks really dirty at all, that dirt impedes the movement of the air by the cups of the blower. So anytime there's any dirt filling up those cups, it impedes airflow and causes uh, an increase in amperage current on some motors like ECM. Uh, and in almost every case, it's going to reduce the airflow at least somewhat. With PSC motors, it can actually result in a rapid reduction in airflow. Unwire the blower motor by disconnecting the plugs from the motor. Disconnect any screws that hold the blower housing in place and slide the blower housing carefully out, making sure that you don't damage anything, especially any wires that might be hanging in the way. Next, you want to remove the set screw. I generally remove it completely and then lubricate the shaft and then push the wheel back down towards the motor. In this case, we're showing removing the screw, pushing the wheel down a little bit and then lubricating. Doesn't really matter what order you use. I do like to push the wheel back towards the motor a little bit though, just to expose some of the shaft end so that way I can clean it up completely with some emery cloth like we've shown here, maybe some brushes, maybe some steel wool, whatever you prefer, but just get the shaft nice and clean and use a penetrating lubricant in order to get it really clean there. Sometimes it's helpful to put a little crescent wrench on the end of the shaft and just kind of twist the blower wheel, counter twisting the direction of the shaft and the wheel just to make sure you break it free. Next, you're just going to loosen the wheel from the shaft by just turning it a little bit like we mentioned and pulling it up just so that way it's nice and loose. Now to flip it upside down and lay it with the motor side up, remove the bolts holding the motor to the housing, remove the motor from the wheel and the housing. Generally speaking, you don't need to remove the motor from its motor mount. Uh, it just makes it easier to reassemble later. I go ahead and take the opportunity to wipe down the motor and the motor mount and everything around it. In some cases, a little bit of compressed air or a little bit of low pressure nitrogen to blow it off outside is sometimes helpful if there's a lot of dust on the blower motor, but many times just a nice microfiber towel uh, wiping it down makes sense. You do not want to get any water inside of the blower motor. Next, take everything outside. First, rinse the wheel and housing with water. Just use a garden hose with a spray nozzle just to rinse it down. If you are going to do this on the grass, you definitely want to rinse down the grass as well. That helps the grass to absorb some water first so that way it's less susceptible to chemicals. And again, we use, like to use non-caustic cleaners like Viper HD from Refrigeration Technologies. If you dilute it properly based on the label, it's very unlikely you're going to damage anything. But again, you want to pay attention always where you do this work so that you make sure that you don't damage anything. Then you want to use a pump sprayer and apply the cleaner to the housing and the wheel. Allow it to dwell for just a couple minutes and then rinse all the parts with water. Give it some time to dry. If you have the time out in the sun, you can maybe even use a battery powered leaf blower some people use, or you can actually just use a towel and just towel it off. Then return the parts inside and reassemble everything in reverse order. I like to grease the shaft before I put the blower wheel back on just to make it easier to remove next time. And make sure that when you are putting the wheel back on that it is perfectly centered and that you spin it by hand before you go and put it back in place. Once you get all done, you put it back into the air handler, fasten it back in place exactly as it was before, connect the electrical, make sure all the wiring is routed properly, and then run test the blower motor to ensure that there are no abnormal noises, check the current, and then test the rest of the equipment to ensure that it's all working properly. So that's it. That is how to remove and clean a blower wheel the way we do it in our company. Hopefully you found that helpful and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching our video. 
If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.